The sweeping U.S. sanctions will be debilitating and might affect the Iranian government day-to-day -day running of the country. They will also be disastrous for ordinary people who are already reeling under the weight of rising prices, shortages and the rapidly falling value of the currency. But is this enough to bring Iran back to the negotiating table? The VOA's Persian news editor, Michael Lippin, joins me on the program to further discuss this. The VOA's Michael Lippin, thanks for joining us on Diplomatic Channel. Taniola, thanks for having me. Great. The Trump administration has reinstated all sanctions removed under the 2015 nuclear deal, targeting both Iran and states that trade with it. Through your reporting, what are analysts saying about the impact on Iran's economy? Well, Taniola, uh, these sanctions were advertised uh, months in advance. We knew back in May that they would be taking full effect by early November. So the uh, impact of these sanctions uh, has already been felt in Iran since then. Uh, one of the biggest impacts has been on the Iranian currency, the rial. Uh, it actually weakened to a record low of 190,000 rials to the dollar in early October. That compares to the official rate of 42,000 rials to the dollar. Now, the rial uh, has since recovered a bit, but it's still pretty weak. And a related impact of that has been on uh, inflation. When your national currency weakens so much, it makes imports more expensive. And the Iranian Central Bank has said that uh, its inflation rate uh, in late October was at 15 percent. That's up from 11 percent in August. Uh, now, a U.S. expert who follows Iran's economy very closely, his name is Professor John Hankey at uh, Johns Hopkins University, uh, he said that uh, his research has shown that Iran's actual inflation rate is as much as 250 percent. Now, a third impact uh, of the sanctions has been to cause many international businesses uh, to pull out of the Iranian market. Uh, in fact, just in the last week or two, the South Korean conglomerate Hyundai, it uh, pulled out of uh, constructing a petrochemicals complex in southern Iran because of U.S. sanctions. And uh, John Hankey told me that when you have companies like Hyundai uh, pulling out of construction projects, it causes delays as the uh, Iranians try to find other foreign investors to uh, take over the building work. And those delays will cause uh, further harm to the Iranian economy. Taniola? Well, Michael, the U.S. administration says it wants to stop what it calls Iran's malign activities, including missile tests and support for violent extremist groups and militias in the Middle East. Does the Trump administration believe the sanctions will bring Iran back to the negotiating table? Well, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo uh, has said that uh, he certainly hopes the sanctions will cause Iran to uh, negotiate a new deal. But uh, he told an interviewer for another network on Wednesday that he doesn't see any sign of that happening yet. Now, I should say that um, Pompeo said that even more important for the U.S. than having Iran sit at a table is that Iran change its behaviors. Now, Pompeo outlined back in May 12 ways in which the U.S. wants Iran to change its behaviors, and that includes stopping some of those perceived malign activities that you mentioned. Now, it's not really clear if and when uh, we'll see Iran and the U.S. at the table. What I can tell you is that the uh, Iranian Foreign Minister, Mohammad Javad Zarif, uh, has said Iran will not be bullied by U.S. sanctions uh, as they see it, and that Iran will try to sustain its economy with its own resources. And from the U.S. side, uh, National Security Advisor John Bolton has said that if Iran doesn't change its behaviors, even more sanctions will be applied to Iran in the coming months. The Trump administration has granted exemptions to eight countries to continue importing Iranian oil, China, India, Italy, Greece, Japan, and South Korea, and also Taiwan and Turkey. Can you tell us more about why they were exempted? Yes, I can. Uh, the Trump administration has said that one reason why it gave exemptions to these uh, eight governments is because they've already made significant reductions to their imports of Iranian oil uh, earlier this year. And so from the U.S. perspective, they are cooperating with a U.S. request, and the U.S. sees them cooperating in other ways, too. Another important reason that they're getting exemptions is that the Trump administration says it wants to see a well-supplied oil market in which the price of oil doesn't rise significantly 
and inadvertently boost Iranian revenues from whatever oil it's still able to sell. Now, uh, the U.S. says it's continuing to negotiate with all eight governments to get their Iranian oil purchases to zero. Under U.S. law, those eight governments have six months to do that without facing U.S. sanctions. The Trump administration has not yet said, though, if it will grant extensions of that six-month grace period to any of those governments. Taniola? The VOA's Michael Lippin, thanks for joining us on Diplomatic Channel. Thank you. Meanwhile, the UK, Germany and France, which are among the five countries still committed to the nuclear pact, have all objected to the sanctions. They have promised to support European firms that do legitimate business with Iran and have set up an alternative payment mechanism or special purpose vehicle that will help companies trade without facing penalties. So how will this work and what impact is it likely to have on U.S. relations with its European allies? My guest on the program, international affairs analyst Alistair Wilcox, gives us his perspective. The U.K., Germany and France, which are among the five countries still committed to the nuclear pact, have all objected to the new U.S. sanctions. How is this move by the United States likely to affect U.S. relations with its European allies? Yes. Um, since the advent of the Trump administration, uh, most of the treaties entered into with its European allies has come under threat. Uh, he you know, you know, that really, uh, exited the climate uh, uh, deal that was reached in Paris. He, he on his own, uh, reneged on the Iranian nuclear deal. So that has brought a string between himself and his European partner. And uh, going ahead to want to impose sanction again on Iran, it's not going to go well with his European partner because they are all objective. To it. Because they had already reached a deal with Iran on how to proceed on the Iranian nuclear uh, programs. And just for Trump to come in and put Spana in the work. So the European allies are really not happy with such action and they will not take it lying low. But what effect are the latest sanctions likely to have on the war in Yemen, where the U.S. is calling for a ceasefire and Iran is the biggest supporter of the Houthi rebels? Well, so long as uh, there is interest of Saudi Arabia in that war, I don't think Iran may want to let out so easily. Remember, the, 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 Yemen, the, the Yemeni war, it's more of a religious war, now it's taking a religious dimension, because... Each side wants to obtain, want to maintain superiority. Uh, Saudi Arabia wants to dominate with its um, Sunni kind of Islam, while uh, Iran wants to bring in its own Shiite kind of Islam. Like, this whole war in, in Yemen has to, is, I mean, it's about uh, Islam, control of Yemen to be what brand of Islam that they want to take on to. So, so long as those interests are there, it will continue. However, well, the U.S. have a more relationship, a close relationship with uh, Saudi Arabia. And, of course, we always want to support Saudi Arabia's move there in order to defeat Iran. And part of the sanction is going to really stifle Iran in terms of its resources, financing, uh, and getting resources to finance the war. But Iran has survived uh, uh, sanctions all this while. Um, so it's also, uh, and that's why maybe the European partners are looking at it. But will this move by the U.S. government to reinstate all sanctions lifted under the 2015 nuclear deal affect the U.S. relations with North Korea, where it is seeking a complete denuclearization of the Korean peninsula? Will it perhaps make North Korea more wary of in dealing with the Trump administration? Well, the Trump administration is blowing hot and cold at the same time. And that is why it is an unpredictable administration. Well, this is one decision in the history of U.S. that it cannot predict its next move. Now, the relationship with the deal with Iran and that of North Korea are two different deals. Now, although it, it all come under the same, the same table, but remember the rhetoric and the firepower of, uh, I mean, the fireworks that uh, Trump had when he came in were against the North Korean leader, calling him a rocket man and all whatnot. Then at the end of the day, they were also able to meet somewhere and to discuss. Now, to what extent is that discussion that they had in Singapore has a, 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 a affected going forward, the agreement that's supposed to reach is left to be seen. And North Korea is getting impatient, really, because I'm sure there are, um, there are requirements on both sides to, to meet. Because really, North Korea, yeah, you want them to give up their nuclear, uh, a, 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 a nuclear program. So what are the guarantees? Have you made those guarantees? Because they also are feeling threatened. 
So I think, I think, I think for me, uh, President um, Trump needs to be clearer and give a clear direction as to what he wants. Does he want peace or does he want war? Because you cannot be blowing hot and cold at the same time. Because right now, after the Singapore meeting with, uh, with, with, with uh, the North Korean leader, nothing much has happened. Yes, Pompeii, the, the, the Secretary of State, has visited North Korea a couple of times, just South Korea. But what has happened? Because already there are some fears that North Korea might renege on those agreements because maybe they are not getting the guarantees that they expect from the, from, the, from the American president. So I think Trump needs to really be clear. The American people need to be clear and carry along their European partners because really you need them. But this isolating and thinking that you are doing all alone and not giving a damn as to what other European powers who are part of this deal are saying. I don't think it's always for world peace. International Affairs Analyst Alistair Wilcox, thank you for speaking to us on Diplomatic Channel. It's always my pleasure anytime. Thank you very much. Still to come on the program. The United Nations describes the war in Yemen as the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Please stay with us.